Yo, what's up? Welcome to Andrew Land. Hey, check it out. It is insanely busy down here today, down at the entrance. Um, I can't believe how many people are actually here, but I wanted to show you some of the most historical facts about this place. There's some really interesting stuff down here, which I've been here probably a good 150 times, but I have never actually realized any of these things. So I'm gonna show you today, you can check them out. Even with something as populous as this down here, with all these people around, it's impossible to see how it used to be back in the old days. The actual road that I'm walking along now was originally the beachfront, and the, uh, as you can see, the water there behind me. And there used to be like a road just, just to the left of me here. Now the road had a fairground on the other side of it, and there were some iconic pieces of uh, history here down in the entrance. Now these days it's all been modernized and you can see behind me the large water feature. There's a playground next to me here. All the shops and everything have been changed around. But let me show you a few hidden gems and we'll check those out. Okay, no prizes for guessing what this one used to be. The most interesting thing about this place was this was built in 1923, but even so it says on the top of the building there, 1935. I don't know why that is. Maybe that was something that Mr. Tiny Edwards, the bank manager at the time, decided to do. Along with only opening one day a week. Now I'm guessing the entrance didn't used to be the boiling hub of activity that you can see today. But you'd think more than one day a week might be a good way to allow people access to their money. Considering they didn't have ATM at the time. Anyway, eventually after much heated debate, they started opening more than one day a week. And they opened it to three days a week. This next one was uh, made in the late 18, 1885, they tell me. Now, it's very interesting. This thing has been around the world. It was made in Germany, moved from Germany to France, then moved from France to Australia in uh, the early 1900s, and then bring down here to the entrance in 1930. This thing here has been pulled by ponies, it has been pushed by Chevy motors, steam engines, all kinds of stuff and now run by an electric motor still here on the entrance check it out here we are on the ferris wheel itself Belle's picking her um hello up on the horse ah oh, up you go ah oh, there we go Say hi! <laughs> ah, there he is! Put your arms up, Pearly! Woo! <laughs> Come and have a go. Listen, this thing is about $3.50 a go. You can ride it for $2.50 if you buy four seats. This thing is amazing. Check out the stuff on here. Anyway, let's move on, eh? So, the pelican feeding that happens down here at 3.30pm each day, that means 365 days a year, is one of the Central Coast's most popular tourist attractions. I don't think so, but anyway, that's beside the point. If you really, really, really like pelicans, then I can see maybe that being true, but, you know, I like pelicans. But, uh, I don't know if it's the most popular. Anyway, a lot of people come and see this every day. And as you can see, there's a lot of people here on a Monday. So, it could be. I don't know. Either way, the Pelican Feed started about 20 years ago by staff at Clifford's Fish and Chip Shop. Now, they used to feed the scraps from their kitchen every day to the Pelicans. And they used to waddle up to that road we were talking about earlier. Now, after that, Jimbo's seafood took over the feeding, and by this time it was a bit of a tradition. The pelicans would waddle over, and the Jimbo's would give them the food, and then, rah, rah, rah. There was pelicans, there was people, there was fish, there was smell, there was mess, there was everything. In 1996, the entrance town centre management built a feeding platform. That was the one that's down there. Now, that's called, believe it or not, Pelican Plaza. 
Now, with some sponsors and a bit of help from some volunteers and uh, coordinator, they actually are now able to feed the pelican for whole fresh fish rather than scraps from the fish and chip shop. That's 365 days a year they're feeding these pelicans fish. Now, that's not a total waste because what they are actually doing is checking on the health and the medical conditions that these pelicans get. And it is quite a bit of a spectacle. Um, I don't also know about the title, the pelican capital of Australia, but, uh, you know, they are here at, every day at 3.30, so maybe we are the pelican capital of Australia. I didn't know we had that title down here in the entrance, but there you go. So, if you'd like to come and check this out, remember, 3.30 each day, easy as pie, come and check the pelican out. So it's hard to imagine now with such the infrastructure and strength in these concrete pillars that are laying beside me. But this bridge just behind me here was actually once made of wood. Now, it was only a walkway of course, they weren't driving any steam trains over it or anything, but check out this photo from back then when this bridge here was nothing but an island hopper. And they used to have to drive all the way around the lake to get to the other side. It's pretty cool, check it out. This building may be the most telltale sign that things have changed since 1925. Check out this older photo of the same building where you can't even see the esplanade at all. You can see how much work they've done in between the water's edge and there now. It's probably a good 40 metres from the front of the hotel to the water now. So it has definitely dramatically changed. First planned to be built in 1925, it was opened December 16th, 1927. Actually, this has had a sordid history. The hotel was actually badly damaged in 1934 when the adjoining Winter Garden Theatre was gutted in a spectacular blaze. But today they've refurbished it and it now has heritage listing. As do most of the items that I've shown you in this video, including the carousel. Believe it or not, the carousel was named an eyesore by the council at the time and they wanted them to remove it from the site. Now they were able to get a heritage listing on the carousel and now it is here for all of us to enjoy and they can't get rid of it. So there you go. Don't miss out on this stuff guys. Come down and check this out. Have another look at the entrance because down here is some amazing history of our central coast. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you found it interesting and uh, check out the new videos coming out next week. Check out the other categories guys, we've got history which is the one that you're on, video games, we have adventures and also Disneyland. Leave me a comment if you've got an interesting historical site on the central coast that you'd like to showcase and we'll come around and have a look. Until next time guys, I'll see you in the comments.